found dead in a hostel in Tamil Nadu's Kallakurchi has been completed. The Supreme Court had turned down a request from the girl's parents to give them a doctor of their choice for the post-mortem. Meanwhile, Kallakurchi SP has been transferred just days after violent protest over the girl's death. The Aam Aadmi Party claims that the recruitment application form for the Indian Army asks for caste and religion certificates. The party stated that this was being done for the first time in history, but the center pointed out that this system has always existed since the British times. I want to say that this is the whole thing. It was the first time that you were in the first time. The first time that you were in the first time, it was the first time that you were in the first time. There was no change in any way. The Indian Air Force is all set to get a big boost. Six squadrons of the light combat aircraft will be uh, inducted very soon. In fact, the order is for four squadrons of the LCA, the Mark 1A, which have already been placed. Seven squadrons of the advanced medium combat aircraft will soon be out as well. 114 multi-role fighter aircraft will be inducted as well. Inducting the aircraft only under Make in India program, which of course will be a boost for local manufacturing. Rescue and relief work is on in full swing in flood hit Maharashtra. In Chandrapur, teams of the NDRF and SDRF waded through waist deep water to try and reach stranded residents. Boats were also brought out for the rescue operations as Chandrapur remained inundated. In order to evacuate people safely, NDRF and SDRF personnel used loudspeakers to try and give residents a heads up. That's when people came out of their flooded homes and gathered in one designated place. With rivers in Vardha and Spet, several dam gates were opened to release excess water. But several people ended up getting trapped in the fast flowing water. That's when SDRF personnel jumped in and carried out a dramatic rescue operation. That's another setback for Uddhav Thakre after Shiv Sena's 12 MPs joined the Eknath Shinde camp. Rahul Shivali has been appointed as the leader of the Shiv Sena in the Lok Sabha. A new chief whip has also been appointed. These MPs have decided to back the NDA's vice presidential candidate Jagdeep Dhankar in the upcoming elections. Former Mumbai Police Commissioner Sanjay Pandey has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in the phone tapping case. The arrest comes after he was grilled by the agency for over three hours on the illegal phone tapping of NSC personnel. The, this was allegedly done between 2009 and 2017. Several countries in Europe are in the grip of a severe heat wave with Britain touching its record temperatures today. One of the worst hit is United Kingdom. For the first time in the country's history, temperatures touched 40 degrees Celsius. Roads are melting and power cuts are rising as UK swelters in the heat. Even runways were impacted by the heat, forcing several aircrafts to divert. An eight-day-long heat wave in Spain has triggered massive wildfires. Passengers in a train watched in horror as a wildfire tore through vegetation near the track in the northwestern province of Zamora. The train was travelling between Madrid and Ferrol but was forced to halt due to the wildfire. Paris is also sweltering in unusually high temperatures. For the second day in a row, temperatures soared above 37 degrees Celsius. Experts say the early heat wave is a sign of what's to come as climate change takes a toll. Former UK Finance Minister Rishi Sunak has, been, uh, has won the latest round of voting to replace British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Sunak has increased his tally from yesterday, bringing him even closer to being one of the top two candidates who will go head-to-head -to, -head to be elected as the new Conservative. Welcome back to Brass Tax. Three people were killed after a speeding ambulance lost control and crashed into a toll plaza in Udupi in Karnataka. This shocking CCTV footage shows the ambulance losing complete control and toppling onto a toll gate before crashing. The deceased included a patient, his wife and a relative. A toll plaza staffer who you can see in that video is seriously injured. Nearly two months after Sidhu Mosewala's murder, two of his killers were eliminated today in a five-hour encounter in Punjab.
raw gunfire ringing out over lush agricultural fields. 20 kilometers from Amritsar, only 10 kilometers from the Pakistan border. Punjab Police's anti-gangster task force had been tailing two of the killers of Sidhu Musewala. Early Wednesday afternoon, as police tracked Rupa and Manu, a massive police force was rushed into village Patna as reports of the two killers hiding there surfaced. The area cordoned off, locals told to stay indoors. Ambulances were rushed in past the security cordon as news came in of Rupa being killed. We've also accessed exclusive video from inside the site of the encounter. The building is heavily damaged after five hours of non-stop firing. The bodies of the two gangsters can also be seen. Police have recovered one pistol and one AK-47 along with a cache of ammunition. A horrific video of a young man being thrashed with sticks is going by. The video shows half a dozen men brutally beating one person with sticks and rods in Rajasthan's Suratgar. They thrashed him so badly that the victim's legs broke. The assailants even fired in the air to spread panic and then fled from the spot. The victim remains critical and the police have been unable to record his statement. But they believe personal enmity was the reason for the brutal attack. CCTV footage from the area is being scanned to try and identify and nab the accused. A solar storm of a significant size is expected to hit the earth today. It's a burst of radiation erupting from the sun, which can release a lot of heat and a lot of energy. It can disrupt services across the globe. It may possibly also interfere with radio and GPS signals. Consequences such as signal outages can be seen through today because of this rare event. There are massive protests in Kerala over the female NEET aspirants being forced to remove their inner wear and sit for the exam. ABVP workers marched towards the Kerala Secretariat demanding an investigation into the incident in which female NEET aspirants were violated. As the protesters clashed with police, water cannons were unleashed on them. APVP workers have taken out a protest march outside the state secretariat in the issue where NEET aspirants had to go through a harrowing and humiliating experience where girl students were asked to remove their inner wear before entering into the exam centre in Fulham. Water cannons were also used on these APVP workers. There is heavy police presence here in this protest outside the state secretariat. Several women have complained that they were forced to take off their inner wear before entering the exam hall in Kolam as the metal hooks beeped during a security check. Five people have been arrested in the case and remanded to police custody. A uh, day after he made a strong pitch to be the Congress's chief minister will face in Karnataka, DK Shiv Kumar has said, let me get the Congress to power first. This comes amidst his growing rift with former Chief Minister Sidharamaya, despite the Congress High Command urging for collective leadership. First, let me get the party to power. Not myself becoming a Chief Minister is not important. Bringing Congress party to power and then giving to the hands of Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi is important. It was another chaotic day in Parliament. Opposition parties staged a protest against inflation and the hike in goods and services tax on certain commodities of daily use. The Congress and other opposition parties have been seeking a discussion in Parliament on these issues and disrupting proceedings in both houses. Sri Lanka has got a new president, but it's the same old ruling dispensation and the protests, the Aragalaya, are raging on. There is no quelling the anger in Sri Lanka. Not even the election of a new president. Ranil Vikramasinghe officially went from acting president to president of Sri Lanka 
polling 134 votes in a three-cornered parliamentary contest. He was always a front-runner since he was backed by the Rajapaksa's SLPP, which is the largest party. And that's exactly why protesters have not welcomed his win. Ranil is a chore. Uh, our parliament minister chore. Uh, Ranil, go home. Ranil Hachanaye. So what would you like to say to the people now, truthfully, as somebody who could very likely be their next president? And now it's up to Vikramasinghe to try and turn things around. All right, new satellite images are indicating that China is making some serious inroads near Doklam. A Chinese village nine kilometers east of Doklam seems to have come up. The Chinese village is now fully inhabited. You can see cars parked at virtually every home. Also, an all-weather carriageway is being built near this village. This carriageway enters 10 kilometers into Bhutan. India has sensitized the Bhutanese into India's concerns for this kind of infrastructure being built very close to what is a strategic location. Geo Institute, located in Navi, Mumbai, has welcomed its founding batch of students for two inaugural postgraduate programs. Addressing the students, Reliance Foundation Chairperson Neeta Mani said that the multidisciplinary higher education institute was born out of a dream to redefine higher education in India. Classes in artificial intelligence and data science and digital management and marketing communications are being, will begin from tomorrow. Several European countries are witnessing record high temperatures from Britain to France to Spain.